Well, hey there. Welcome back to The Gun Cranks. This is the 17th iteration of us trying to record this episode, <laughs> but here we seem to be. So I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Weed, along with Tom McHale, the editor of American Hen Gunner Magazine, and Roy Huntington, our special assignments guy that does all of our hit work for Guns yeah. Magazine. So. See, this I'll, is proof that magazines are more reliable than streaming technology. That's right? no kidding. And it, just to be clear, this is not our fault. This is a known, very broad scale bug in the software we use, right? Yeah. Just to be clear. Yeah. Well, I was near suicidal last week trying to do this, and we had several aborted sessions. <laughs> and then on, I think it was Friday, I got a nice email from the folks <clears throat> who manufacture this product we're using and paying for. And they said, we, we've had a few problems lately. Huh. No kidding. So I'm that not going to mention. That was after they blamed us, right? Yeah, after they blamed us. <laughs> we didn't have enough computing power going. Well, that's funny. It worked up until two weeks ago when you updated the system. So we're not going to mention the product, but if you're watching, okay, it seems to be working right now. So I guess we'll continue to pay you. Okay, guys. Okay. I guarantee a bunch of Silicon Valley nerds are not watching this yeah. broadcast. <laughs> well, you know what's sad? I, that was the first thing I thought is, oh, because we're firearms. I'm sure, oh, we're sorry. There's problems with your setup. Yeah, right. <laughs> whatever. So anyway, we're the Gun Cranks. We're apparently back. We're apparently nationwide live, and we're going to talk about a bunch of fun stuff today. So first, let's let's take that, lead that into that. Ah, can't even talk. Can't even talk here. Let's go into news and views. All right, it's news and views. We survived our first break, and we're going to talk about stuff. And it, it, I got to say, this is more inside baseball stuff. But we got together. We thought the system was going to work. And we said, now, Roy, we haven't done much preparation. Are you ready to talk what you wanted to talk about? <laughs> no. I threw the paper away. <laughs> That's the kind you know of what? professionalism we have here at Gun Cranks. <laughs> you know, a guy retires, and he thinks he doesn't have to do anything anymore. Really? You know? I know. Crazy. <laughs> well, Roy, I... <laughs> I got to say, I've been getting emails and people mentioning it and phone calls, and the this is a shocker. The mainstream news is not really covering it, but the firearms industry is all got its its undergarments in a twist. So, Roy, can you tell us about that? Well, you know what? And yet again, uh, I think they had their undergarments in a twist for a good reason. Basically, mm -hmm. in a nutshell, the Commerce Department decided in their infinite wisdom to momentarily pause exports of firearms, ammunition, firearm accessories to countries where those things were going to be used by bad people for bad things. And but that was kind of where it stopped. So. We thought it was a pause, okay, and then it was going to be reinstated and the export will be opened again, except now the Biden administration has just come out and they said, oh, by the way, we decided we're going to make that permanent. And But but now what that means to the you know Sam and Susie Homemaker out there is that I spoke with some manufacturers, and these are were mostly small sort of family-owned businesses. Uh, one of them had about eight employees. They did about $3 million a year. They were manufacturing parts that they shipped overseas that were used in the production of firearm-related accessories. They weren't even guns. Uh, and so now his business was cut 100% because the people over there are not making the things because they can't get the product. So now they're get it going out of business. So he shut his company down. It was in a small community, basically the biggest employer, uh, and they're out of business just like that. They couldn't hmm. even weather the pause uh, because, like he said, we were manufactured. Then I spoke with a, call it a, a boutique custom handgun manufacturer here, but someone who makes several hundred guns a year. Uh, he had big sales in some of the Asian countries uh, where they use these guns is in police and military units. Well, the, uh, the Biden administration said that it was okay if you were selling to police and military, except in these countries, commercial dealers have to take a receipt of the imported guns. They then resell them to the government. So naturally, the Biden administration said, well, no, though, you're not selling them to the government. You're selling them to a dealer in that country, so you can't sell it. Mm -hmm. And 
when my friend called his representative at the Commerce Department, it was really interesting. He said, the guy said, trust me, this did not come from us. <laughs> this is directly from the Biden administration. He said, we got a call from the White House and said, we're to do this. And they said, we don't see any problem with anything that's going on right now. I, and, and like he told my friend, I would have granted you this license in a second. That you're not doing anything wrong. Uh, but so now my friend has two or 300 guns that were built for this shipment. Well, that's uh, now, uh, you know, that's like I'm out of business now. Right. Uh, so so that's what's going on. But I think the, the key now. Oh, I will say this. There's a cadre of Republicans and I think a couple of Democrat senators who have now moved forward to put this on hold while it gets reinvestigated. And they're doing everything they can uh, you know, to stop this from occurring. But I think what's happening is the Biden administration, since they can't say we're going to take your gun away from you, what mm -hmm. they're doing is they're doing everything they can to make the business that we do impossible to do. So that's where we're at. And yep. uh, there well, you that's go. That's straight out of the Obama playbook. And from what I hear, he's still running the country. So <laughs> no, I know what you mean. So basically, if you're, you know, if you're a consumer out there, I would say pay attention to what's going on. The proverbial write your congressman, write your senator. I mean, this means if you don't do this, because there is there's a large segment of our uh, manufacturing community who export firearms, ammunition, and parts overseas. And for a lot of them, that's a significant part of their business. So mm -hmm. right now, they're not doing that business, and which means they could go out of business, which will affect our industry. You know, So it's like a little thing. But I'll tell you what, the Biden administration, they like – you know, they, they, they're coming close to kicking the stool out from under us. So, uh, so yep. there you go. It's death My by a thousand is cuts is the, you know, it has been the strategy for quite some time now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just, you know, they're playing the long game here. It's like chip, 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 chip. And eventually the thing falls down. So, well, it's that old adage about how do you eat an elephant one bite mm -hmm. at a time. One bite so at a time. they it's, they they've come at us from the front dead on for so long and they lose every time virtually every time that now they're you know they're being more nefarious they're going through the back door they're doing what you said tom you know it's like chip 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 and pretty soon you do the, you look around and you say hey where's that company they're not in business anymore you know hey that little <laughs> town's uh employ you know unemployment rate just skyrocketed you know so the, the really nasty thing and I, correct me if i have the numbers wrong but i think roy you when we were talking about this a week or so ago uh, the initial program was 90 days. I mean, what a, and I'm saying this, you know, looking from the opposite perspective, what a great way to introduce a really rotten plan. Oh, it's, we need 90 days. Just, we think there are some problems, you know, we got to check this out. No yeah. worries. It's just 90 days and everything will be back to normal. It was never 90 days. Come on. You know, no, absolutely. The, the whole not. point was getting it on the table under the guise of 90 days and, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course, it's permanent. <laughs> well, and someone I spoke to said I didn't take action because I thought it was 90 days. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it's like I can I can handle the 90 days pause because I know the product will eventually go. Uh, but it's like that. You know, the where they what is it? They put a lobster in a pot and then it, the water slowly boils. And then before you know it, it's boiling. It's mm -hmm. a lot like that. They're, yeah. oh, it's okay. Like you said, you know, it's just a pause. Don't worry about it. Oh, it's here's an extension of it, but don't worry about it, just an extension. Oh, by the way, it's permanent now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So. And let me guess, I've not read the uh, the rule, but I'm sure common sense gun safety is in there someplace, right? Well, it was all about we don't want to uh, uh, contribute to basically bad people using gun stuff that we supply. You know, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Mexico. You somewhere know, else uh, in the world. Yeah, somewhere else in the world. Well, and here's the ironic thing was, as one of my contacts said, he said, I I even had got delayed and it took a, it was a real goat rope to get an export permit approved to a country that was on the good list. <laughs> In other words, it's one that's approved for export. Right. Uh, he said, but even that was on pause. Uh, so 
anyway, so it's terrible. And I know it's not fun stuff to talk about, but we have to be paying attention. So, yeah. Okay. Enough of that. Enough of that. And I'm sure uh, that list includes Ukraine. And uh, we, we were laughing that uh, they, they need all the help they can get because the Russians have finally figured out that if you if you're not going to close the hatch on your tank, just drive into a carport. <laughs> and if you're, if you're not familiar with this, you need to look it up. Uh, I was uh, telling Tom and Roy that uh, uh, turtle tank. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. There's a picture of the turtle tank. <laughs> and I was trying to describe it to him, and I said it looks like somebody took a tank and drove into one of those. Uh, uh, aluminum carports that you see people, you know, put up next to their garage. And that's exactly what it looks like. So now I, my money is betting on the Ukrainians. will figure out some way to defeat that. But, uh, you know, looking at that picture, guys, I heard, oh, that it's armor plated. I'm sorry. That's just tin roof from a, a shack. <laughs> corrugated roofing. Yeah. It does. I think it it's looks like corrugated roof. <laughs> it's painted tactical yeah. pink. Although, also. Yeah. The expensive yeah. ones use that tile, though. You know, the red tile. So, yeah. you know, that you get a longer lasting <laughs> roof that way. I think. Well, 20 year warranty. Question, <laughs> never having been a tank operator, and maybe you can leave a comment if you, if you were a tank driver somewhere, leave a comment down below. Wouldn't, if you knew people were tr trying to have your DJI drone drop a grenade into the open hatch, maybe keep the hatch closed? I'm just guessing, but I don't know. Those crazy shh, Russians. Shh, don't tell them. Maybe they, they haven't oh, thought of God. that yet. Wow. So, wow. so, so we can end, end that uh, segment, a uh, very heavy segment, and again, reminding everybody, contact your congressman and representative. But uh, anyway, yeah, check out Turtle Tanks. So... <laughs> and and you better chain your carport down. <laughs> they, you may see a tank <laughs> driving through it. Now, so. are, under the new <laughs> rules, are you allowed to export carports overseas? Still? Well, no. And you better Probably watch out. So, so we can't even now the Russian guys. the Russian mafia is going to be stealing <laughs> carports here in the United States. So yeah. lock down your I'm carports, saying, everybody. I'm just saying. Bad luck. Yeah. Fathers, mm -hmm. lock down your carport. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, guys. Well, we've got some cool letters coming up, so let's get into letters. They know their stuff. Well, as we always say, letters, yes, we get letters. We get all kinds of letters and comments. And i got to say, Roy forwarded me, forwarded me one from a video he just did, and uh, I haven't got in front of me, but what did it say, Roy? Floor blah glomp flab blibby blabba. Yeah, it was like Mork from Ork or something. Was you know, I had no idea. So I uh, responded to him and I left him a note that was like Flibbit's garble larft ectar bark. Huh? <laughs> you know, but the sound and, from my iPad came through just fine. <laughs> yeah, I just don't. I just don't oh. know. You know. You know what's funny is I didn't think about it, but a lot of folks have, uh, you know, uh, those uh, smart speakers. And, of course, we think our computers and phones are listening to us. be interesting to see what pops up in your advertising feed <laughs> if you bounce into the gun cranks. <laughs> Fork, glorp, norp, yeah. so I so. know my, my, uh, my echo in the other room just said, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, uh, we'll run through some letters here. Like we said, we love uh, a reach out out to us editor at gunsmagazine.com americanhandgunner.com or in the comments below and guys i i've got one i answered i may have committed a an atrocity here i answered a letter for roy and it was uh last uh, month's issue which will be coming out very soon i was putting it together and uh I had this question. It says, please forward to Roy Huntington. I just watched your short video on the Star BM and picked up on the statement that you had numerous versions of the pistol. I purchased a Star BM some years ago as my first project pistol. Da -da 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 -da. A problem has developed. The slide stop will lock the slide back randomly during the shooting process. It does not happen if I purposely keep my left thumb pushing down on the slide stop. And then he talks about he's had guys do stuff with it and, uh, he said he did swap out the slide stop and had the same results. And I uh, said, I'm thinking the holes uh, in the frame are worn and not providing enough friction or detent in the slide stop is not, uh, sorry, the detent in the slide stop is not providing enough pressure against the slide stop screw button. Just reaching out to a respected user, 
Roy, um, for on the, this fine pistol for your opinion. So <laughs> here's what I responded, and I'll get you guys' opinion. Roy I wasn't available at, cra- at press time, so I'll <laughs> yeah. take a crack. And it wasn't Roy because I was doing it like at 930 at night, and I figured you didn't want to answer a, a letter at 930 at night. But uh, I said, I've got a star PD. I carried one for years. Uh, the As you surmise, the malfunction is caused by failure of the slide stop detent to keep the slide stop depressed during recoil. In this order, I'd fall, I'd look at the following problems. One, the slide stop detent spring is broken or otherwise defective. It's got that little plunger in it that holds it. The detent plunger is worn or missing, or the slide stop button is damaged. It could also be tolerance stacking the combination of the three. So I said, swap out some of the, some more of those parts and see what you think. So, okay, learned guys, the, the slide is <laughs> auto opening. So what do you think? I, um, I think what he said. I mean, okay. uh, yeah, good. Cause I, mean, I was, I was really afraid Roy, you'd be like, um, Hey, dumbass. How about yeah. this? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take a contrarian opinion and oh, but first I want to make sure I understand the issue. So the issue is when, when he's done shooting the slide ends no, closed. just during no. shooting, it's popping up and it locking locks, the slide to the rear. Oh, it locks open. Okay. Yeah. I, I take that back then. Well, the the other thing, though, is with this withdraw thumb forward thing, you know, that everybody does, I certainly see people bump the slide release back up, yeah, you know. So true. when he says it doesn't do it if he keeps down pressure on it, but it does do it as soon as he stops doing that. Because the other things we talked mm-hmm. about, it's like, yeah, maybe, but I think it's mechanical, especially because I think he said he swapped it out and it still did it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning toward operator error on this one. Yeah. Um, Good point. Good well, that's point. what I was thinking if it, if it was an issue of it closing after the last round, because I see that all the time and yeah. I get it all the time and I don't care because I, I, I'm a slide racker, not a, not a button operator on magazine changes, but, yeah, um, me too. um, you know, your thumbs move around under recoil. So maybe get that out mm-hmm. of the picture for try that, curl that thing down like a revolver or something and. You know, yeah. get, be an inch away from that lever when you're shooting and see if it still happens. Well, and, and I've had it happen with people who mm. uh, shoot, you know, Glocks and some other kinds of guns. And then when they get to a 1911 and they have that a relatively prominent slide release or slide stop like a star. Uh, and invariably, they'll shoot a few times and the slide will lock, <laughs> you know, and they'll say, oh, damn, 1911s, no wonder. Anybody, you know, <laughs> yeah. so. So I make him shoot it one-handed, right-handed, for instance, and then suddenly the gun runs fine. <laughs> you know, so okay, excellent point. Okay, Tom, I have a letter too, and you know, funny we didn't plan this, but it's another technique letter, and it occurred to me as I read this and decided, hey, this would be a good thing to bring up. I'm not sure we've ever discussed this, and it's all kinds of contra- it's all kinds of controversial. In mm. gun guy, gun guy discussions, right? Probably one of those things with no right answer, but let's bring it up. Um, so this is from Roger, and I, I, the mail's too long to read the whole thing, but the gist is this. I was wondering if you've ever made a comparison of trigger reset time and weight. And, you know, basically, and he goes on to say, hey, maybe there might take a little custom engineering broy uh, to make a device to measure such things. You know, the I, I measure reset distance with, with a, a ruler <laughs> and, and, <laughs> kind of like, uh, I don't, I wait's a whole different thing, but, uh, but he's talking about reset basically to be able to better communicate the reset characteristics of a gun. And what I started thinking about was, Hmm, it occurred to me that when I write a gun story, I report on what the reset is. Cause a lot of people want to know, but when it comes to me shooting, I don't really care. You know, if I'm shooting one shot and then another shot, yeah, I feel it. But if I'm shooting fast, there's no reset involved in that. I mean, that thing's coming all the way forward and all the way back. And I said, this is a great discussion point. I want to hear what you guys have to say about the whole trigger reset topic. Well, you know what? I It's interesting. I tested the Smith & Wesson, what is it, CSX, their little 9 millimeter mm-hmm. single stack they came out not too long ago. And a lot of the YouTube uh, gun experts were saying that the trigger fails to reset regularly. Well, I put about 500 rounds through mine. I didn't have a single problem with it. And I limp-wristed it and I everything did, right? (laughs) And uh, But then it dawned on me. So what I started doing was riding the trigger forward 
and I was trying to get that, you know, just barely when it resets and then you start to pull it again. And guess what? It would, it would lock up sometimes. And so what these people were doing is not allowing the trigger to completely reset. And Rob Lathan showed me one time was he said, he slaps the trigger every time Mm -hmm. he shoots. He said, my, my finger comes off the trigger and then re-engages the trigger specifically for that reason. He said, you've got to let it reset. And I know people ride 1911s especially because they, they go click. You know, they kind of have an obvious feeling reset. But mm-hmm. you're playing with fire if you do that, though. Um, and and we all know Robbie Latham it can beat anyone in the entire universe Is shooting he? a gun. And he's, and he's, I, I was going to say, Roy, <laughs> he's just Robbie Latham. Okay. He's not a tier one, super tactical. So extra some guy we've ideal. never heard of is telling <laughs> yeah. you that. with a YouTube yeah. channel, but, yeah. but he, cause he told me, you know, we were talking about this at some, you know, with falling plates and stuff. And he just said, I mean, in two minutes, he showed me how it's just as effective. He said, no, yeah. you still press the trigger. He said, but you just let your finger come off the trigger and then press the trigger again. And, yeah. and he does it so fast. It's like finger comes off the trigger. You reacquire the trigger, you press. I mean, it's, it's, it's smooth, but mm-hmm. it allows the trigger reset. And I, boy, I don't think the reset, um, strength of the spring or anything has anything to do with anything. I mean, like Tom said, you don't feel it. You just pull the trigger and let your finger off the trigger. So well, if I'm not you do sure. feel it. You're going slow. You're going slower because yeah. you're processing that. You're riding it and processing that forward motion. Check, check, mm-hmm. check. Is a reset. Mm-hmm. Is a reset. Is a reset. Pull again. Yeah, that's slower. Than that's s- slower. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say I, I'm more of the the militant on this. I mean, I agree with you guys. It's like I think people are way overthinking or trying to show how smart they are. Because I've never had this problem except those times when I'm thinking, okay, let's see how slow and you know steady the reset or see where the reset point is. But, I mean, after a couple of shots, if you're still having trouble, that's on you. That's not on the gun. So I, yeah. I think it, it just falls into the, hey, look at me. I, I found something that's different than all the other YouTube influencers. And I know we're not <laughs> supposed to make fun of those people, but... This is what you, this is the point that we try to make that just because they say it and they've got 1 million followers doesn't mean they know what the hell they're talking about. So, well, you know, I've also found the, the younger people who grew up shooting uh, semi autos when they get introduced to revolvers, this is something I hear regularly and that, uh, they'll, they short stroke the double action trigger pull on a revolver. Yeah. And so I have had people, I've had people call me up and say, Hey, my gun's broken. Can you fix it? And I'll say, well, what's it doing? Well, sometimes when you pull the trigger, it binds up. And I said, well, explain that to me, you know? <laughs> and so, and, and it's a classic, you probably had this happen to you. If you, you can short stroke a double action revolver trigger like Smith and Wesson, especially, and it will lock up and you can't, mm-hmm. you know, you can't pull the trigger. But if you let your finger off the trigger and let it cycle completely and reset, it'll work every time. And invariably, when I tell these people, pull the, take the gun, pull the trigger, let your finger off the trigger, let it cycle its double action through, you know, the return spring. Now pull the trigger again. Now do that 5,000 times and nothing will go wrong. <laughs> you know, and invariably that's the case. And so it, it almost always is operator error with rare exceptions. So, yeah. Well, it's like the guy that emailed me the other day. I was talking about shotguns, and and I don't even remember. Oh, we were turkey hunting, and he took offense. Why would you ever carry a pump shotgun? Because you can short stroke them. Well, y- 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 your semi-auto might not work. You may load a tube of chapstick in your single shot. I mean, it's that's <laughs> operator error. That's not the fault of the gun. And I've done it. I, I get that. It's a little easier <clears throat> with a pump gun. But when you get down to it, it's the operator that's causing the trouble. You just need to learn your manual of arms. So anyway. Well, this, is, this might be a first. It sounds like there was universal agreement. See, yeah, I, I find it interesting. You know, we, we're gun people. We talk about how many clicks the hammer has here and there between this gun and that gun and get all worked up about how many screws are in the side and stuff like that, which is fine. So to me, it's it's mechanical observation is what it is. So we say it, you know, or I'm speaking for me. I measure it. I report it. I say it resets at a quarter inch and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I hear it. I feel it or it's rough or gritty or whatever. Um, but it did occur to me that, 
wow, I don't really do much with that information other than go, hmm, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's funny that in all the years I've been doing this, I don't think I've ever once reported on the reset distance because in my I, I don't care at it's all. It's free you words, know? Roy. It's it is it's more words. You it's can like in high in. school, like when you can make the font bigger. We can't yeah. do that because the magazine fonts are fixed. So it's free words. Uh-huh. You know, the one thing, though, that terrifies me out of this conversation is that somewhere, someplace is a accessory manufacturer who is thinking, you know, I'm going to introduce a new line of trigger return springs to guarantee yeah. certain reset poundages, yep. <laughs> you know, and it's and like they'll, they'll find a, an influencer to say, you know, I, I have to change out my return springs all mm-hmm. the time because yeah. I don't like 0.25 pounds. I like 0.26 because it will make you more tactical. Tactical, yeah. Mm-hmm. It'll make your beard shinier and your tattoos glow even more. <laughs> Unbelievable! Wow. Okay, guys, we got anything else in the in the uh, basket right now? Ah, yes, Roy. Do I have? Can we talk about the video, the Springfield Armory video with the government? Is this where we can talk yeah. about that? Okay. I recently did a short on Springfield Armory's new. Uh, SA16A2, so it's like a A2 AR15 or M16, and and it's cool, right? It looks exactly like a military gun, only it's probably made better, and it it even has a select fire switch on the side to burst mode, but you can't go there because it's just for <laughs> fun, right? Well, just for fun, they put property of U.S. government on it, and. It's really funny, though, because like there's a lot of people that lost their mind and they were going, (laughs) well, you're never going to catch me with that gun because if, you know, you could get caught with it and they would assume that you stole it from the U.S. government and then you'd end up in prison and you'll never get your gun back. And then you'll have a reputation and and the whole rest of your life of that. And so I went to my gun safe and I took my three 1911 pistols that say property of U.S. government on the side. (laughs) You know, and yeah. all of the millions of carbines and garands and who knows what else is out there, O three A threes and you know, uh so those things get released from the government regularly and um I don't know if any A twos have been released, but I don't know if they converted them or whatever. I know some of them made it to police departments, so do you throw but, away yeah. those 1911s because they're illegal? <laughs> yeah, I better have. throw them away. You know, yeah. say, anybody want to give me like a hundred bucks for them? You can yeah, just I'll, send an I'll email. And, I'll dispose of them for you. And I'll just do that. <laughs> but I, and, and so anyway, I don't know. Haters will be haters. The other thing while we're talking about this, can I bring this up? Is that people, if something costs like $1,200 or $1,300, like the Springfield Armory rifle costs, what costs that much money, it's because it costs more to make a gun that's better quality. It costs more to engineer a gun. It costs more to assemble a gun with, by actual real craftsmen, uh, not Bill in his garage with a wrench. And I'm surprised at the people who say, well, that's stupid because I can buy a parts gun and it's only $350 and it's exactly the same. You might, it's not exactly the same. <laughs> Okay, I don't mean to be ugly here, but your $350 parts gun where you got one part from this guy, two parts from that company, this part from Thailand, this part from Venezuela, and now you put them all together in your garage in between smoking and drinking a beer. This is not going to be the same as a gun that's manufactured in a facility that's specifically intended to do this process by people who actually know what they're doing using high quality components. And you know what? It's going to cost more if you do that. So, okay. (laughs) You guys, do you have anything to add to that? I was just going to say that, that kind of makes me think of a, a topic for a gun cranks or a podcast. Are there any guns out there? We, we handle pretty much all of them in the industry. Are there any that just off the top of your head, you would go, that thing is overpriced times three. I no. I, I just can't think of one that, that, and maybe there is if I thought long and hard, but for the most part, there's a reason. Now, some of them, the, the profit margin is a little bit more than others, but there's even kind of a standard profit in the industry. And I just don't think there's too many that I would be, uh, 
willing to identify as now they're they're making way too much money off something that's not not good. So no, there's well, no three thousand percent profit margins. It's your it's your no. decision if you're gun willing to pay for the feature that drove the cost. You know, we've had guns come through that are you know that are fine mechanically, but just beautifully, gorgeously finished because somebody spent a hundred hours hand polishing the slide and, you know, frame kind of stuff. But, well, that costs money, right? You may not care about that, which is fine, buy a different gun. But if you do... <laughs> well, that's like looking at, you know, looking at a, at a Mercedes AMG something sedan that, and you're only going to go 70 miles an hour in it. And people say, you know, well, my 68 Pontiac with rusted fenders goes 65 miles an hour. So my, so why do you need that car, man? Right? Yeah. Well, then, you, but you don't get it, okay? You know, uh, I mean, it's like I have a, I have a William Henry folding pocket knife that was fifteen hundred dollars. Does everyone want to spend fifteen hundred dollars for a pocket knife? No, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. You know, go to Walmart, buy a ten dollar pocket knife. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's also nothing wrong with spending money to get something that's, as Tom said, beautifully crafted and and wonderfully put together that gives you real pride of ownership. And so both of those things are okay. So I, you know, so just lighten up. <laughs> well, Roy, I mean, that's the perfect code of this is haters going to hate. And unfortunately, they hide behind the keyboard and we're on the receiving end occasionally. <laughs> and sometimes we even get glob flob not flip dumb flab. I think he was Can drunk. I... <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me add one more thing to that. And since we're on a rant, and that is that <laughs> I have found people who actually know what they're talking about. In other words, if you get a group of engineers together or a group of custom gunsmiths together and you hold up three different guns of three different price points, I don't know of any time someone was going to look and say, well, that's a real piece of crap, right? They all understand the the build quality variables and the reasons why things cost the way they cost and all that. And so they yeah. appreciate and admire what these things are for what they are. Uh, and I think people who are ill-informed are the ones that make those kind of statements. That's the opposite. Let me jump in there. You, that totally struck me just right now. Roy panned another nugget of gold. I've been, we all three have been around a table, a campfire, any of that kind of stuff with engineers and folks that have worked in the business. And you're absolutely right. You, you never hear, well, that's stupid or that's, that's a dumb gun. You never hear that there. I don't care for that. Or I, I don't think this feature is, you know, well thought out. But the guys that really know what they're talking about never do that whole, it's stupid, it's dumb, it's, I don't know why you'd ever buy one, I hate that gun. Mm -hmm. They just, different strokes for different folks. But that was a, that was a very astute observation. <laughs> well, you know, it comes, uh, thank you, it com but it comes from, I have stood in the Smith & Wesson booth and talked to one of their engineers who is was the responsible person for a brand new product line of guns, which is very successful. And I said something like, well, what about that one that Ruger's doing, you know, that's a competitor? And he said, you know what, I think that's a very nice gun and they're doing a really good job making it. And I think if someone likes something like what they're doing, that they couldn't go wrong buying one. <laughs> and it's there like, you go. There you go. <laughs> you <know? Yep. laughs> Well, cool. Well, once again, we've taken what was just going to be a couple letters and turned it into a whole discussion, but I'm going to draw it to a close on that one. But uh, w like I said, we, we love to hear uh, from you. Editor at GunsMagazine.com, editor at AmericanHandGunner.com. We can send it to Roy if you want, or if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment down below, except if you ate a whole bottle of uh, melatonin. Uh, why don't you wait till that wears off before you post a <laughs> comment like flour gobbin blab not bopped. So <laughs> anyway, well, okay, guys, now uh, our third and final segment, the often imitated, never duplicated, but beloved by one and all here, hold my beer awards. So let's, let's do that right now. Well, hey, guys, here, hold my beer. And one of these days, we're all going to have to have a beer. I, that'll probably get us in hawk with YouTube, just like everything else. But uh, 
for those that the the one or two people that don't know, hold my beer. You know, that's the famous last words of many a redneck. Here, hold my beer. Let me show you how to shoot bottle rockets out of an orifice or something like that. So <laughs> people tend to do stuff like that on the inter interwebs all the time. And we've got our producer, Ashley. She picks out some of her favorites over the last couple of weeks, and she's going to show them to us. So Ashley, let her rip. I mean, it's still hard to believe that part of my job is scouring TikTok and Instagram and YouTube to find these videos. But here we are. Um, the videos I have to share today are kind of a compilation, but it made me think back to an old episode of either the Gun Cranks or the podcast, the Guns Magazine podcast. I can't remember which one it was about potato guns. So here are some <laughs> potato gun fails. <laughs> or successes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord! Oh, wow, I want that. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Burn oh, his hand. Oh, oh, As you can see, oh, this is oh, 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 golly! Oh, oh, and the, oh, 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 Jesus! Oh, 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 Jesus. oh, oh, yes. oh, 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 Oh oh oh, 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 look at that's that. That's a oh. good idea. Look down them. Yeah. Oh, that that's not going to go good. <laughs> what the heck? Is that a bouncy ball? Uh, uh, there? Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mr. Darwin, your chlorine is ready for the gene pool. Wow. God. That was great. <laughs> Man, you know, and it, but once again, though, we have to remind people adhere to the four firearm safety rules. Yep. <laughs> and while you're and, laughing, you're saying and that. stay away from the back of potato guns too, including <laughs> it's like a recoilless <laughs> rifle, isn't it? <laughs> well, that one knucklehead looking down the back. Hey, I'm going to shoot flammable <laughs> aerosol in here. Let me see what's going on. He didn't have no uh, eyebrows after that. That was definitely a hold my beer. It'd I just hope the Ukrainian uh, you know, <laughs> defenders are watching this right now because I have a feeling this would be a way to get those Russian tanks. That's true. You know, potato yep. guns on the side of the road, shooting grenades under the eve of the new, you know, carport carport mm -hmm. covers. Yeah. And then yeah, the you Russians use the will be running potato around. Potato gun to knock off the corrugated roofing, and then. <laughs> well, actually, I hear the Russian troops are not getting fed very well, so you might see them out there with a catcher's mitt trying to catch the potato. <laughs> Great! Wow. Now we'll have the KGB after us. Thank you, Brent. You know, might as well. I know. You know, serious biz is the the one that fractured. Um, you know, PVC is not really it's pressure rated like 100 PSI or something. Um, those things can fail, and those little shards are like glass. So, yeah, and they also go bad. They degrade with yes. ultraviolet. So, like, if it's more than a year or two old, you need to just let a Russian tank run over it. So, <laughs> yeah. I still can't believe that guy's looking in there trying to start it. <laughs> hey, look at all that flame there, Bill. Yeah. What the Excellent. hell? Yeah. Uh, well, have, has any of us ever had a potato gun mishap that we're willing to admit? I won't talk about ours in public. <laughs> but actually, no, I did actually one time where we shot oh, a yeah. steel ball bearing through the sergeant's door and dented his locker. Yeah. <laughs> That was a pregnant pause. Let me tell you, we knew we were in trouble because it didn't go. Usually they kind of go bunk when they shoot. Oh. And this one went crack. <laughs> and we, and I, we all went, uh oh, <laughs> you know what? I completely forgot about that. And I'm laughing. The, the ball bearing story, I completely get because we've all done anybody that's been in law enforcement. You've done stuff like that. But the best part of that entire episode, and we have to look it up was what you did next, which the, I will uh, summarize. It, it involved a deceased pigeon and a the, potato gun. A flaming dove. It was a flaming <laughs> dove. Yeah. yeah. And I, I remember laughing so hard. I was driving over to uh, Geneseo, Illinois, and see our friends at, at uh, Springfield. And I thought, I'll listen to the, the podcast. And I was somewhere in the plains of Illinois, and I was all over the road laughing and crying and i i get 
Because wasn't it a lifeguard you nearly killed? With we all nearly pigeon? killed a lifeguard. Interesting side note to that story is uh, <laughs> the fish and game warden who was named Big John. That was I won't say his whole name, uh, but he and I are still friends. And uh, I was talking to him not too long ago on the telephone, and I reminded him of that, you know, and the night we had it on the podcast, and he started to laugh. And it's funny because he has this laugh. He goes, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> and so we, he laughed. And of course, it got us laughing. And then, and you know, and you know what else happens then, right? Is that then you start remembering all the other stories. Yeah. <laughs> And then, so we spent the next 40 minutes saying, and remember that time, <laughs> and remember that time, you know, oh. we do need to do, we do need to, to do maybe a podcast and it's about adventures at the boat landing ramp. Oh, good Lord. Because a- yeah, when I was on the Harbor unit, if it was summertime, especially a, a holiday weekend, summertime, we would go to the cruise galley and our police boat, get sandwiches and drinks and stuff like that. <laughs> Then go back and anchor in the middle of, it was called Dana Dana Boat Ramp. It was this basin, and that was like the big boat ramp, you know. Yeah. And uh, and we would just hang back there, throw a lightweight anchor down, and just enjoy it for about the next hour. And it was amazing. The divorces that occurred, oh, yeah. you yeah. know, the family fights, the fisticuffs, oh. the submerged dodges. The, <laughs> I mean, it never <laughs> ended. So. I'm- I was going to say, I've got video of, of a truck that uh, there's a parking brake for a reason when you, and you should set it when you're leaving your truck back in the boat in. But uh, I'll, okay, I'll tell you one thing though. I, I've done one major dumb, stupid thing. When I was launching my boat in Florida, um, my unnamed person who might be a sibling of mine was watching me and I handed him the bow line, right? Well, <laughs> I'm, boat goes in boat drifts out and i expect to see the line go taut no it was just trailing (laughs) i'm like the boat is now in the middle of the bay and he's like oh i didn't know you wanted me to hold on to it (laughs) so i'm thinking do i swim for it and there's gators and, and sharks and and just proving to you the almighty looks out for idiots and drunks and boaters it got out in the middle of the bay, and then it started coming back to the dock, and it, it docked perfectly on the dock, and I just stepped aboard and tied it up. So, <laughs> Wow, that could have been ugly. So I, I do like that, Roy. It's it's absolutely not gun-related, but everybody has has seen stuff like that. So it's, we're going to do it, Guns let's Magazine do it. Podcast. Cop stories. So, All right. Yes. Well, cool. Well, uh <laughs> That took a turn I hadn't expected. <laughs> Ashley, that was some uh, great video. I, I always like knuckleheads with minor injuries. We, we don't want to see too much death, but minor injuries are always good. And that is the ethos of here, hold my beer. So anyway, like we said, uh, leave us comments and letters and questions and all that stuff. And uh, we'll answer them or we'll forward them to Roy. And uh, Roy always is really good about checking our, our YouTube. And Hey, guys, you know what we just did today? We set the date, and I didn't think about it until this very moment. Let me see if I can dig through this. On the 23rd of May at 8 p.m. Eastern, and do the math from there, but 8 p.m. Eastern on the 23rd of May, you're going to get your first chance to talk to the editors. And we're all going to be there. We haven't heard from Eric Gelhouse yet, but we've invited him. So if you've got a question about guns, law enforcement, why Tom looks the way he does, or any of that, we're going to do a live answer question and answer session uh, right there. We will not value guns. I'll tell you that right in advance um, because that just gets into a whole thing. And every time I've tried to help somebody out, I turn out to be completely wrong. So we're not going <laughs> to value guns, but we'll answer your gun questions and just anything and everything you want to talk about. We'll even talk about boats and flaming pigeons. So the 23rd at 8 p.m., everybody's really looking forward to that. So even you guys, you're even excited, aren't you? I yeah. think it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So we'll do that, and Ashley will be there to kind of ride herd on us. You know, you've you've got to have somebody with some kind of responsibility, and Lord knows it's not the gun crank. So we'll have Ashley in there uh, fielding questions, and it'll be on 
the plan anyway is we're going to be on Facebook and YouTube live. So you'll be able to post questions and on either platform and we'll be able to answer them. So once again, 23rd of May, 8 p.m. Eastern. And that translates, I think, what, to 5 p.m. on the West Coast. So we'll be promoting that on our various channels as we get closer. But uh, circle it on the calendar, May 23rd at 8 p.m. So anything else before we go, guys? I think I'm we're good. good. That's a big negatory. So, okay. Well, on lock, behalf lock of... Lock up your carports. Mm-hmm. Lock up your carports or the Russian mob mm-hmm. will come for them. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, we'll uh, we'll do... Uh, this was great. We finally got this episode in the can after... I think we tried five times or something like that. It was ridiculous. And I was really upset. So, company that provides the software for this... It looks like it all worked. So anyway, hopefully now we'll th- it'll be smooth sailing for the gun cranks. So on behalf of Roy Huntington and Tom McHale, the editor of AmericanHandGutter.com, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat, reminding you, don't forget, hey, hold my beer, film it and send it to us. And we'll play it because, guys, why? We're the gun cranks. We'll see you later. Um, I have a good friend who was a fishing game warden at the time, and I happened to look in the back, and he had a dove in the back of his truck that he had confiscated. And I said, what are you going to do with this? And he said, oh, just, you know, throw it in the dumpster. I confiscated it. So we got the potato gun, <laughs> which happened to be dove, dove caliber, right? And it was just getting to dusk. We loaded the potato gun with the dove, and so little shot of stuff, boom, Right. Well, this dove, it was like this flaming meteor <laughs> shooting outside of the office. And it went it went out into the traffic circle out there. This flaming dove like that. It shot this cloud of dove pin feathers all over the office. It was this huge cloud of <laughs> like we're laughing, but then we're not laughing. And I swear to you, this is the funniest thing. We're looking, the doors open, and we see this face. <laughs> go around the door, right? Or what was one of the lifeguards? Because the lifeguard tower is right next to us. He looked inside. He said, are you guys okay? And I said, I said, did you see the flaming dove? And he said, I wondered what that was. Let's examine this though. First of all, was the dove alive or deceased when you? No, it was a very dead, kind of, kind of hard and cold. Oh, okay. Dove, you okay. Know? So it made a really good projectile. <laughs> but still flammable, apparently. <laughs> We didn't. We never thought about it. It would catch on fire. I, I so wish we uh, had a video of that. It was just like, <laughs> and it left like a trail, like Haley's comet.